My name is Amy Foltz, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm your officiant this morning. WES is one community unified across time and space, gathering for these Sunday platforms to affirm our values and commit to a better world. So I want to welcome those of you who are in the hall, those of you who are watching now on Zoom, and those catching the recording later. If you are on Zoom, please check the chat for a welcome and various tips from Joe Klein, today's Zoom chat usher. If you're here in the hall and would like an assistive listening device, please check with the sound team in the back. A special welcome to our visitors today. We'd love to get to know you and answer any questions that you have. To get on our email list, you can fill out the connection form at tiny.cc slash westconnects or send an email to wes at ethicalsociety.org. And if you're here in person, we invite you to stop by the welcome table at for, after platform or chat up anybody with a white name badge. I'll now check the Zoom chat to see who's attending remotely this morning. We have a good morning from Patricia Weil. Good morning all from Cynthia Goodman. Um, and some tips from Joe Klein, today's Zoom chat usher. It is good to connect uh, and share this time together. Our opening words this morning for Pay Attention to Love Day are from Richard Alpert, otherwise known as Ram Dass, an American spiritual teacher, psychologist, and writer. The greatest thing you can do for another being is to provide the unconditional love that comes from making contact with that place in them that is beyond conditions, which is just pure consciousness, pure essence. That is, once we acknowledge each other as existing, just being here, just being, then each of us is free to change optimally. If I can love you just because we are here, then you are free to grow as you need to grow. Today's opening song is Still I Will Love, performed by the West Chorus and West Band.
right. Thank you so much, West Chorus and Band. Uh, each week, we read our statement of purpose as a reminder of our shared values. If you're interested in taking a turn to read the statement of purpose, you can sign up at tiny.cc slash read SOP. You can read it here in person, or you can make a recording that will be included in a future platform. Today's reader is Rajesh, a longtime West member, fellow member of the officiating team. And I got it right here for you. Let's see. The Washington Ethical Society is a humanistic congregation that affirms the worth of every person. We strive through our relationships to elicit the best in the human spirit. With faith in human goodness, we appreciate each person's unique capacities. We joyfully celebrate together and support each other through life. We nurture a sense of reverence and responsibility for each other and the earth. We warmly invite you to join our community of children and adults as we work for a world where love and justice cross all borders. Thank you so much, Rajesh. As Rajesh lights our community candle, I invite everyone to join in our candle lighting words. May we kindle within us the warmth of compassion, the light of understanding, and the fire of commitment to build a brighter future for all. Each week, we read this chime in solidarity with people around the world. Today, I'm particularly mindful of the children and child care workers and health care workers who must deal with navigating an inhumane health care system that does not recognize their full humanity. As we listen to this chime, let us remember our connection to each other and the world around us. Let us open our hearts to compassion for those who suffer. And let us commit ourselves to the work that calls for our love. And now our senior leader is going to lead us in a meditation. I want to invite you to take a big, deep breath. Try to relax your shoulders. Sometimes you can find them up by your ears. That's not where they belong. Let them go. Maybe you need to stretch a little bit. It's a good idea. Be mindful of that there might be people next to you. Just let yourself have the time to arrive here. And once you've arrived and you feel settled in your chair, I want you to bring to mind an image of love. That image could look a lot of ways. It could look like sparkly pink light. It could look like a memory of a favorite time with a beloved family member or partner. It could look like the comfort of snuggles from a cat or a dog or whatever other kind of animal you enjoy keeping in your home. It could look like time spent together with fellow Wes members. It could look like activism like a moment when you rallied with other people to get good work done. Whatever image you find, just hold on to it for a moment. Let yourself feel it.
let yourself feel and remember what it's like. What it's like when you share love, when you feel love towards someone or something or everyone and everything. What it's like when you feel yourself being loved. When you feel yourself as connected to a person, to another creature, to the world at large. Hold that sense of love and connection as we continue our meditation in silence and the music that follows. Today is Pay Attention to Love Day. I was excited to be the officiant this morning, as I've personally been thinking a lot about love and readings related to love, as I'm planning a wedding in the next few months. (laughs) 
Hmm? Mine. Mine. <laughs> I would not be planning a wedding for anyone else. It's very stressful. <laughs> but I have the good fortune to be accompanied uh, not only by the love of the West community, but accompanied by two people today that I love very much, including my friend who's here visiting West for the very first time this morning. <laughs> So today's reading is a poem from the poet, activist, and educator, uh, Nikki Giovanni, entitled Resignation. I love you because the earth turns round the sun, because the north wind blows north, sometimes, because the pope is Catholic and most rabbis Jewish, because the winters flow into springs, and the air clears after a storm because only my love for you, despite the charms of gravity, keeps me from falling off this earth into another dimension. I love you because it is the natural order of things. I love you because I don't want it any other way. I am helpless in my love for you. It makes me so happy to hear you call my name. I'm amazed you can resist locking me in an echo chamber where your voice reverberates through four walls, sending me into spasmatic ecstasy. I love you because it has been so good for so long that if I didn't love you, I'd have to be born again, and that is not a theological statement. I am pitiful in my love for you. The Dells tell me love is so simple. The thought of you sends indescribably delicious multitudinous thrills throughout and through in my body. I love you because no two snowflakes are alike, and it is possible if you stand tippy-toe to walk between the raindrops, I love you, because I'm afraid of the dark and I can't sleep in the light, because I rub my eyes when I wake up in the morning and I find you there, because you, with all your magic powers, were determined that I should love you, because there was nothing for you but that I would love you. I love you because you made me want to love you more than I love my privacy, more than I love my freedom, my commitments, my responsibilities. I love you because I changed my life to love you, because you saw me one Friday afternoon and decided that I would love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Our platform speaker today is West Senior Leader Casey Slack. Thank you, Amy, for that wonderful reading. I never go to speak about love without first thinking of the elephant love medley from the Moulin Rouge movie. If you're not familiar, uh, this early 2000s movie is a Baz Luhrmann way too grandiose movie musical about a courtesan and a broke young man story as it ever was. In this particular scene, Ewan McGregor's broke young man is trying to convince Nicole Kidman's courtesan to be in love with him. And what starts is a musical medley of pop love songs. He says, all you need is love. And she says, don't start that again. He says, all you need is love. And she says, love is just a game. He says, all you need is love. And then continues. She does not become convinced in the course of this pretty impressive rock medley. And I think about that because it is so easy if your reference point is pop and rock songs about love to be like, wow, that is an empty concept. Now, I love me some love songs. The playlist Caitlin and I made for our wedding keeps getting longer even though we've been married for two and a half years. Because I love a mushy song. I don't actually know how many our songs Caitlin and I have because I develop a new one all the time. Tennessee Whiskey is one of our songs. Annie's Song by John Denver is one of our songs. Multiple Randy Travis songs 
are our songs. But so is Bad Girl by Usher. I don't know. <laughs> We're sort of all over the place. But when I need love to be more than something that I'm dancing and singing around, when I want to live into the Randy Travis lyrics about love deeper than the holler and stronger than the river, higher than the pine trees growing tall among the hills. I got to get into something that is more than the bubbly feelings, though the bubbly feelings are fun. For love to be something that really matters in my life, to be in the middle in the way that I think of love as being in the middle of how I live my life and how I think about the world, it's got to have something stickier. Let's ignore the implications of that. Let's just it's got to dig in a little bit. Let's go with that. Dig in. And for me, the definition of love that has been most able to grab hold of me and dig in is love as a commitment to caring. Yeah. Love as this emotional experience, the fluffy, flittery one that you think of when you see the balloons and the hearts, right? Which are beautiful. Thank you, Karen. Um, that love is kind of fleeting sometimes, right? How many of us have felt very infatuated with someone or something, only to find out a month, a year later that, ah, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Some of us have probably done that a bunch of times. I have done that a bunch of times, given to fits of passion. Hmm, sue me. But love is a commitment to care. That asks more than that you have bubbly feelings about something or someone. As a commitment to care, love says we need to be together in a real way. We gotta talk about the stuff that matters. We gotta get into the places where things are difficult. We have to recognize that being in love with each other in any way you might mean it requires us to invest in each other, to think about each other's hopes and dreams and becoming to accept each other as not static subjects of infatuation, but real whole people growing and developing together. And this is true whether we're talking about two people in a romantic relationship, three people in a romantic relationship, a couple hundred people in a congregational relationship, a group of friends, Whatever the context is, we need to hold on to each other. So we're going to think together today about love as a commitment to care. We're going to think about the ways that we care for our space, right? The way you make a house a home, a congregation a home our care for each other, what we do to take care of each other when we need it, what our processes are as a bigger community for communication to come in and let us know when you have needs, how you can tell the people in your friend group, in your family, in your relationship, hey, I have a need because Accepting that you need things and expressing them is part of being in a loving relationship with people. And we're going to talk about care for our individual and collective dreams. I'm going to start with an extra little reading from a book I've been reading this month called Black Imagination, which is curated by Natasha Marin. This book was recommended to me by somebody who I sit on the creative council of the organization Infleshed with. 
in fleshed does liturgies for queer Christians and also some moving in the direction of being a truly interfaith organization, which is much of what I do there. This book is a collection of short essays and reflections that began as installation art. The author, or curator, as the case is, asked a wide variety of black folks questions. And then art was made out of their responses. And we have the answers to the art in the form of this book. So this one is early in the book in a chapter titled simply Imagination by Reagan Jackson, who lives in Seattle, Washington. When I wake up, there is someone there who loves me. When I leave my home, people living on my street know my name, know my parents' names, name and claim me as their own, drop by with soup when I am sick, and small gifts during holidays. And I do the same for them. We break bread together. We laugh and dance and work and build together. Wherever I go, I am known and I know others. We greet each other with smiles and hugs. Our expressions are always genuine. We don't hide resentments between clenched teeth or anger in clenched fists. We say the words that need saying. We speak and listen and forgive and understand. We are peaceful in our hearts and actions and our peace is never built on the sacrifice of another's peace. Our community is not built on the suffering of others. We live in balance, never taking more than we need, never needing so much we can't sustain ourselves. And each of us are honored and valued and respected as equal members of a collective, irrespective of age, ability, ethnicity, gender, or any other descriptor. We bring all of who we are. I'm sharing that because I think it could be another version of our statement of purpose. Another version of what dreams we have collectively about this space. A place where we know each other, where we can greet each other by name, where we claim each other as our own, recognizing that you have others who are yours too. Where we care for each other when we're sick and offer each other simple gifts when it is time. Where we have peaceful coexistence, not because some of us are swallowing painful things, but because we've talked, because we've decided to care for each other for real, in a way that requires none of us to sacrifice our own peace for the peace of the whole. Where we're not gripping our anger or being eaten alive by it. Where we're not clenching our teeth to get through conversations that always go the wrong way. I think we're well on the road to this place. I think this place is somewhere we all wish to get to. I think many of us would like this literally everywhere. But the space we have the most ability to change is here. So thinking about space specifically, what do we do to care for our physical space that lets us be in this kind of loving relationship that shows to other people, people who maybe just walked in the door this morning, that this is a place that they can come and be known and loved and heard and cared for, where they can make a difference. Well, we've got some stuff on display. We show up here. Hello, you're here. That's cool. Love that. Sometimes we put up some decorations. 
right? We have a good time here. Decorations are allowed. We're not required to be austere and serious. This is not a number of things that might be required to be austere and serious. We laugh here. We can have fun here. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments. Find somebody nearby. Maybe somebody you don't know as well, but if the people near you are all people you know well, don't go far afield finding a new person. Have a little conversation about what you might do. Even just theoretically, but if you're a long-term member, think in a practical term. What you might do to make this space loving. All right, I'm giving you two minutes. Do it. <laughs> I love when you get so excited that it takes me several rings of the bowl to get you back. I hope you had some, some good ideas. I hope if you had good ideas, you'll share them with me, at least, maybe at the microphone during community sharing. Would love to hear some of that clearly vibrant conversation. So taking care of our space is one of the ways that we show love for our community. This can be bigger things, decorations, maintenance, right, important stuff. You could volunteer to be on the building team. The building team is pretty small. Mike's back there if you want to talk to him. You could also just make sure that before you leave, something is cleaned up, right? So people work really hard to get coffee put out in the morning. And they've been here since early, so maybe they don't need to stay to clean it up too, right? Maybe making sure that everything is cleaned up can be everybody's job. We work together like if we're a kindergarten class. Uh, <laughs> as an aside, I used to, when I was in seminary, refer to seminary as kindergarten for grown-ups. Because let me be clear with you, 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 seminary kind of is. Particularly, I was in full-time residence, and I had a cubby. And there was a closet with snacks in it. And basically, all of my classes were, what if we were nice to each other? Just in the language of graduate school. 
I was really good at kindergarten. I was really good at seminary. Stuff in between, mm, here and there. So taking care of our space is one piece. Taking care of each other is an even bigger piece. How do we know when someone in our community needs help? Yeah, they have to say something, exactly. This baby's got it down. The best way for us to know if something is happening for you is for you to let us know. We have a pastoral care team which will send you a card while you're in the hospital, will set up a meal train if you need, help you find rides to appointments you need a ride to, and also just is there to lend a listening ear if you need. I am also available for the kind of pastoral care that is mostly a listening ear and thinking through some things. We have a number of ways that you can communicate with us. You can literally bring your body to my body on a Sunday morning and say, hello, I have a need. That's one way. You can email the pastoral care team, pastoralcare at ethicalsociety.org. There are little blue forms on the desk that say, Wes cares. You can fill that form out and it will get returned to me, and either I will reach out for, to you, or someone from the pastoral care team will reach out to you. We're really trying to emphasize that this is something that we do here. Yeah. Because in the course of the pandemic, with being away from each other, the normal routines of checking in with and hearing from each other across the diversity of Wes's membership got a little less clear, right? When you don't see people as much, you don't think about it as much. When you're in your home and you don't need to go places, it doesn't come up so often that you might need some help going a place. So I really want to underscore that we've got some processes already. You can email me, kcs at ethicalsociety.org. All of this information is on the website. You're going to get some more emails about it, too, that will also have a link to the same information that is on that form out there. Listen, I am trying to make it as easy as possible for you to communicate with us if you need something. And your need doesn't have to be, I am in the hospital. You don't have to get all the way there before you tell us, OK? It does not need to be an absolute emergency. Nothing needs to be on fire. Nobody needs to be dying. You could reach out because you're having a difficult interpersonal interaction, and you want to think a little bit about how you might approach it. You can reach out because you want to connect with other people who have similar childcare needs to you. You can reach out because you notice that you're aging and you want to have a conversation with someone about what any of that means, you can reach out because you've got big question mark questions and you just need to sit down and talk with somebody. You can reach out because you think you might need pastoral care. You can reach out because somebody else in your life is having a really hard time and you are helping them because you need care during that situation too because vicarious trauma is a very real thing. And when the people close to us go through intense stuff, we go through intense stuff too. You can also tell each other, right? You don't have to tell a specific committee. You can tell your friends. Now, if you have needs like meals or rides or something, please do let the pastoral care team know we have some extra capacity for that. But also remember that the people sitting next to you are people who are here because they want to be in community with you. They want to know you and care for you and support you. And an unfortunate reality is that to be loved requires allowing yourself to be known. Being known is sort of an ordeal, I understand. Uh, 
have my own big set of please do not perceive me feelings. Wild, I know. I look like this, I stand up here, but I would sometimes like to not be perceived. So please use the resources that exist, talk to each other, and take a couple of minutes to chat to somebody nearby about what we might do to help care for each other's physical and emotional needs. It's another two minutes. Get to it. I don't get to ring the bell very often, so this is fun for me. So the other pieces are to think about our individual and collective dreams and goals. That's probably a bigger conversation than we have time for this particular moment. And I'll tell you, we are working towards what will be a year-long process next year, next year as in August to June as the program year runs, of thinking together about our dreams and our goals, our vision for this community. But I want to get us started and in digging into it right now while we're thinking about love. Because love is about supporting each other in growing, about supporting each other in dreaming. Love is about helping each other seek the highest in ourselves, become our next favorite versions of ourselves. One thing that a community can do is support each other's growth. I had an interesting moment about this yesterday. It was a flash tattoo day at Maya and Caitlin's favorite tattoo shop in Baltimore. Valentine's Flash is like a new concept. I had never seen that before, but there was something cute on the menu. And so we got up at nine o'clock in the morning and got to Baltimore at 10 o'clock in the morning and then sat outside the tattoo parlor for an hour, uh, which was not necessary, but usually is. It's not the point of this story. We got matching uh, Portal Magic Heart Key tattoos. You can look at this closer later. Caitlin also has one. Whether or not you can look at that, I don't know. You have to ask. <laughs> the tattoo artist who was doing our tattoo is 
a trans woman who has been in the tattoo industry for a long time. Something you might know about the tattoo industry is that it is often not particularly welcoming to women and queer people. A lot of the tattoo industry has been very heavily identified with white men who ride motorcycles. Shock. And Huntress, her name is, works in a queer tattoo shop, gets to be the mentor for another young queer tattoo artist, and Flash Day is not usually the most talkative time with a tattoo artist. If I want to have a conversation with a tattoo artist, which I often do, uh, I get bigger pieces. <laughs> but these littler ones, usually you're in and out. It's called Flash for a reason. It's fast. There weren't a lot of people there, so Huntress wound up talking to me while I was getting my tattoo. So mind you, this conversation is happening while I'm laying down on an object with my arm out like this, because that's the only way to get that part of your body tattooed. But out of the blue, she says, you know what I really love about tattooing? I love that it's always communal. That any piece of art I make lives on somebody else's body. That there is always a collaboration, even if it is flash that I drew, that I then do exactly like I drew it. Because now it's in somebody else's skin. It is different because it belongs to someone else now. And I thought, wow, we're just putting my platform together for me, aren't we? <laughs> and she said, you know, portal tattoos are really popular in the style of tattooing that I do right now. Portal tattoos being like this, where the object appears to disappear into one side and reappear out the other. And she said, and that's really communal too, because we all draw the coolest thing we can think of and then send it to everybody. And then somebody else says, oh, that's really cool. I see how you did this. And they draw the coolest thing they can think of. And now everybody's stuff is cooler than it used to be. And I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about how in a community you should be able to say, hey, here is something interesting, cool, fun that I learned. Here is something that is helping me feel like I am better at being a human, like I am enjoying doing life more, and have other people say, oh, hey, I see how you did that, and come back with their own cool thing that they did. I want us to share our cool things more. In the previous section, I was suggesting that we share our hard stuff a little more often. That too. But what would it be like here if a regular part of what we did was like personal growth show and tell? Right? You could bring a piece of art that you did. And in fact, people bring art that they did all the time. Bring some art. Contribute. They could bring a piece of art that you did and say, I made this, and I was thinking about this while I made it, and, and find that somebody else has been thinking about what you've been thinking about. And then you grow together for a while. And we grow together for a while. There are a couple of you, I will not name names, but you might be able to guess. There are a couple of you who sometimes will write a paper and bring it to me, and then I will get to edit it. And whenever I tell my not-so-academic friends about this, they think that sounds horrible. I love it. It is one of my favorite things that I get to do, is read what people are thinking about, what people have thought about hard enough that they put it into a PowerPoint slide or an essay or a video even and get to say, OK, I see what you did there. What about this? And then we have a conversation, and I am changed, and I, I think y'all are changed, and we are growing together. I don't have time for each and every one of you to write me papers, so 
please do not. <laughs> However, feel free to send me pictures of things that you think are cool, a piece of art that you saw. Send me a song that you listen to. Send each other songs and art and memes. I love memes. Because the things that you find that make you feel alive should be part of this community too. Whether they are serious things that you've thought a long time about or something that made you laugh and think about this community. It could be a 30 second TikTok or it could be mm, up to half an hour of video. I have limits. <laughs> You could schedule time with me and I will tell you it's gonna last an hour and book off two hours in my own schedule because I don't know how to shut up. But I want you to share here and maybe share here at this microphone on Sunday mornings too, the things that are making you feel alive. Because our shared aliveness is one of the points of this and encouraging our mutual growth and aliveness is one of the points of this community. Our individual goals and growth and our collective dreams aren't actually different things. Our collective growth is our individual growth <laughs> added together and stitched together. Our aliveness together, the vitality of this congregation, is in part the vitality of each of us as linked together by care, as linked together by love. We belong to each other in a meaningful way. Your membership in or friendship with or attendance at this congregational space say that at least for this morning you are ours and we are yours. Your continued membership, your memberships longer than my life has been so far say that I am yours and you are mine and we are all together each other's. I'm going to give you one last two-minute period to talk about something that makes you feel alive right now, a piece of art you've seen or heard or experienced recently that spoke to you, a dream you have for this place, or a dream you had in coming here in the first place. Two minutes, get to it.
still enjoying myself. I hope that the little conversations you've gotten to have throughout this platform have been enjoyable, enlivening, maybe have invigorated some sense of something in you. I hope that some of you will share the things that you talked about at the microphone during community sharing. I hope you'll continue some of your conversations in the hall after platform, or maybe you'll get a group together to go to lunch. That's something you could do. Love is so much more powerful, a motivating force for me when I think about it as a commitment to care. When I think about it not as ephemeral bubbles, as much as I love the ephemeral and bubbles. When I let love get a grip on me, really take me to where I need to go, it reminds me of how committed you have to be to caring for each other. And the last piece of that commitment is being ready to change. Yeah. Because you cannot encounter another person in a real way and walk away unchanged. You are not a stone statue, and as it happens, even stone statues are changed by interaction. You will continue to change, and the dream is that when we do it together, we will change in ways not that make us more the same, but that make us each more ourselves, each more networked together as individuals moving in the same direction. Apparently, it's time for me to stop talking. <laughs> and so I will. But remember that love can be so much more than pink overconsumption, sparkles, and no matter how much I love them, cupcakes. <laughs> Remember that you can be changed by each other, that you should be changed by each other, and that committing to each other is not just good, though it is good, is not just fun, though it is fun but is actually one of very few things that successfully changes the world over and over and over again. Thank you. Thank you for that, Casey. In a few minutes, we'll have our community sharing time where you can write into the Zoom chat or share in person here at the microphone what might have resonated with you during this platform. While we listen to today's musical response, you might prepare by reflecting on a personal experience, an activity at West that, bring, that the platform has brought to mind. Perhaps you're ready to share some of your interesting discussions that we've had today. So I'll hand it over to the West chorus and band.
Thank you so much to the West Chorus. Now is the time when we add our own voices to the morning, sharing our reflections on the platform and what resonates with our personal experiences. For the online participants, I invite you to share in the Zoom chat or in the comments if you're watching the recording later. If you're here in person, please come to the microphone here on the floor and share your comments, brief comments, so that others may also share. Uh, on the Zoom chat, we have a good misty morning from Joni, Sarles, and Wayne. And we're still waiting for some more comments, so please come to the microphone and share with us. Um, hello, Jeff Mihal here. Um, I'll start by saying I am not having a good day today. Um, it's it's not that I have anything against love or the idea of love, but it just hasn't worked out for me the way that I see it work for other people. And these couple of days uh, from about now to maybe next Saturday, I feel really anxious and antsy and I don't want to participate and it just, you know, it, it just seems to be to be a, something that other people have that I don't have. Um, I don't begrudge anybody a relationship and the love and the joy that they're experiencing. Um, I, I can't do that. I won't do it. And I'm glad you have that, that wonderful list of songs, Casey and Caitlin, that seems to be growing. Well, mine's very short. And I'm not into rock and roll. I've never been into rock and roll, but I'm a jazz fan. And I started thinking, Casey, when you mentioned your uh, songs, you know, there's a line or two from uh, a Billie Holiday song that popped into my mind. And I won't even begin to try to do justice to the great lady day. But the two lines I thought of was, love is like a faucet, it turns off and on. And when it's turned off, baby, it has done and gone. Hi, I'm Abby, she, her. I um, I was thinking when you were talking about love as a commitment to care, the, the, the thing that popped into my mind as the image of love was when I first held my first child in my arms. And the thing is that there is no way in which a baby can commit to caring for you. And yet, I think it's true to say that our children love us. And But what I, I have noticed is for children who are raised in care as they become capable of being committed to care, they, they kind of naturally start doing that as they're able, the same way they start talking as they are able and moving around on their own as they are able. Thank you. Sorry, I did not give you enough warning that I was coming up to the microphone. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so when Casey was telling us to think about things that we'd like to share, I think many of you know that uh, uh, my mother wrote a humanist religious text that is very important to me. And so uh, when we were in the meditation, which I'm always, I've always got it out, and reading it during the meditation, because to me, that's how I, that just does a meditation very well for me. I'm listening on the one hand and reading on the other. And so I said, well, so where, where does, in the Ode on Reason and Faith, where does my mother talk about love? And, um, and then when, Ab, when we just heard, uh, <clears throat> so my mother is, tr is trying to show what is the relationship between religious humanism and all of the traditions that have come before. She's trying to say, look, we're standing on the shoulders of everyone who came before. And so she starts, and so she says, well, look, what about love? Well, Jesus Christ came out and he said, love is very important, which in the, that, when he said that, that was new uh, in religion. And, but then after he said that, then they said, okay, we're gonna spread this religion, how? through the sword, okay? And so, uh, and so she talks about how that's not really uh, advancing love. And she then pointed out, and furthermore, 
this religion then started claiming that every form of love was sinful. And so she finally comes around and she says, of earthly loves did mother's love alone escape the taint of sin. The suckling child that chanced to drink love's draught made love its own before its soul with terror was beguiled. And while their brethren warred in panic wild, love nurtured men, earth gendered wrongs could sense, could read the sword torn flesh as earth defiled and seek earth remedies in man's defense. Hi, I'm Roberta, and um, so I'm sitting here, and I have used to be involved in, oh, I'm sorry, and, that, um, and I used to be involved in the celebrations team and paying attention to love was something we had developed and other forms of it. But anyway, a couple of, about four weeks ago, I dislocated my elbow, but not only that, I also have a hand, um, my median um, nerve, is affecting my hand that because I make a fist. And so I'm sort of living with um, how to make my right hand, which is not my dominant hand. But anyhow, I found out that I should call up Casey or email Casey. And I do have somebody, and then Christine called me back and said that she will help me with some of my transportation needs. But I think love is caring, but it's also you have to choose to love and to find love within yourself, and it comes to you back and uh, to others. And if you just sit there on a rock and sort of say, Ugh, I'm poor, nothing happens. But if you look, reach out and also you just be kind to yourself, I think that's where you're paying attention to love. I'm Laura. Isn't it great we have a consistent reminder of what love is over there? <laughs> Thank you. So there's like 4,000 things in my head which I probably won't remember in an hour. So I loved, loved, loved this platform. And like Abby, the first thing I thought of was a newborn, holding that newborn. That to me is the most exquisite example of pure unconditional love and connection. And I've been fortunate enough to do that with two grandchildren, five grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren, and it fills me up. And when I'm down, I can think of those moments looking at that newborn and the joy in my heart and my body, and that fills me up then too. And then I had an idea about connection. You know, folks, how when we get together, one of the first things we do is a go-round? That's a connection. What if we had a go-round of sorts before we start platform? What if either it was like a moment to say, here's the topic or theme for the month or today, and what do you think of that? What does that mean to you right now before we've heard anything? Or something else, but making that connection when we come in the door and sit down and really be present with each other. That's my wish. Thank you so much to everyone who has shared their thoughts and attention with us this morning. And just as we share our perspectives in this community, so too do we share our resources and gifts. Here at WES, we split all undesignated gifts in our Sunday collection between the operating budget and a fund dedicated to justice and compassion. For the month of February, we are pleased to support DC Action. DC Action was founded through a merger between two leading advocacy organizations, DC Adv Action for Children and the DC Alliance of Youth Advocates. Both have long histories av of advocating for the district's children and youth. DC Action for Children was formed in 1992 to provide data analysis and policy leadership on critical issues facing children and youth. 
The DC Alliance of Youth Advocates was formed in 2004 as a coalition to promote and propel youth into productive and healthy adulthood. In 2020, a new strategic plan and merger was unanimously approved by both boards to build a stronger, united, and more independent organization, which launched in February 2021 as DC Action. So let's all take a moment to prepare to respond to the invitation to generosity as we're able to. To donate online through the Simple Give system, text an amount to 202-335-1885, go to tiny.cc slash westgives, or click give on our website, ethicalsociety.org. To donate in person today, please just place cash or check in the basket in the back of the hall on their way out. And as always, you can send a check in by mail. Thank you for your generosity. We'll now receive their gifts and the gift of music. so much to all the many people who helped create this morning's time together, today's platform speaker and senior leader Casey Slack, our musicians, the West Chorus and the West Band, staff members in Dara Miles, Robin Kravitz and Maceo Thomas, and of course our platform production volunteers, our tech team members, slide artists, Zoom chat ushers and in-person greeters. I want to mention a few things upcoming in the life of our community. You might have seen some balloons in the hall. Please take one. <laughs> There are also some cookies out in the lobby. Please eat them. <laughs> if you are an artist, or maybe not an artist by, by name only, and you, but you create art and you want to share some art with us, please reach out to me, or you can email Laura DeShulo because we would love to display your art in the hall. Uh, also, if you have a song in your heart that you would like to perform on the final Sunday of this month, please get in touch with Karen Storms. Uh, that's it for announcements today. As always, you can find information about opportunities to connect in our weekly news and notes email and on the calendar page of Wes's website, ethicalsociety.org. And again, if you are new to our community, please introduce yourself in person or via the connection form at tiny.cc slash westconnects or send an email to wes at ethicalsociety.org. We would love to meet and connect with you. 
At the conclusion of today's platform, please join us for social hour, either here in the hall or on Zoom at tiny.cc slash westcoffeehour, but cookies are here in person only, unfortunately. <laughs> we are working on the Zoom integration with the cookies, but it has not been figured out just yet. <laughs> So please join us in our closing uh, music performed by the West Chorus and the West Band. This is a sing-along, folks. <laughs> and you've heard the song before if you were here last week. So, all right, let's do it. Okay, let's give it up one more time for the West Band and Chorus. And Judy on the kazoo! All right, now for our closing words for the month. Let us go into the week ahead with compassion, understanding, and commitment, caring for all children as our own, and building a more just and equitable world each day. Thank you all for joining today's platform in person or remotely. We look forward to connecting with you again soon.